So Notion Mail is an alpha, and we're all very excitedly waiting for that to be generally available and to have some connection between Notion Mail and between uh, that and the Notion application itself and Notion Calendar as well. Um, but for now, I'm still using Spark Mail because Spark has a unified inbox and I really need that as like a business owner to be able to see all of my emails from all of my accounts at once. I'm imagining that Notion Mail will have that eventually, but for now, I'm still using Spark. And the really exciting thing that got shipped yesterday in Spark is they now have a Notion integration. So we're going have a look at that today. So I've gone ahead and created a inbox in my personal dashboard here, and you'll see why I did this in a little bit. Uh, it's got a filter that says created at today and status is not complete. Um, and so what we're going to do is, and actually let's change this to uh, on or before today. No, today's fine. We'll leave it at that. Uh, you'll see why this is kind of tricky uh, when I finish this tutorial here. Uh, but let's go over to Spark. And uh, I've opened up the integrations tab here, which is just a command comma, or you can go down to the bottom here. It's down on the bottom left with the setting setting uh, down there. And then I'm gonna go to the Notion integration and I'm gonna click connect. And this is just giving access to, uh, to Notion uh, via the Spark uh, account. And you can see here it's asking me to pick some pages and create content within the pages. And this is cool because we're able to add database pages and inject the email content into the database page itself. Uh, there's some bugs here, and I'm not sure if this is on Spark side or on Notion side, but we'll see what happens here when I select the pages. Uh, I've already added the OK Actions database, which is my task database. So we'll say OK Actions, pick that. And it says already added. Great, that's been manually added. So that's the database that I'm going to give Spark access to. I may want to give it access to other pages if I'm wanting to move emails to different places. But for now, we're going to stick with the actions database. So I'll say allow access. Uh, it's asking me to open Spark. So I'm going to do that. And it's going to finish the authorization. There we go. It says use save to in command center or right click on email to save. Got it. And I'm going to go back to the browser real quick because we'll see this this bug here is that like it, it kind of finishes authorizing and then it's gonna say that it timed out eventually. Um, I'm just closing the tab at this point. Uh, like I said, I'm not sure if this is on Notion side or Spark side, but there is some kind of bug with the OAuth process right now. And there you go, uh, feels to have. And I usually just say okay and close this down and hope that uh, things are working correctly, but it does seem to work. Um, at least the integration does. I'm not sure about the OAuth situation. Uh, but anyway, let's go check out my inbox. Um, I'm going to get out of this. Um, I've got an email from Joe here. She's inviting me to do some end of year live journaling. And I want to save all this information into my Notion. Looks pretty cool. Um, so let's see what we got here. I'm going to go to the command center when you hear. And I can also access that by hitting command K on Mac. And it told me to say send to. Uh, so send to, or was it save to? It was save to, and I can click enter there, and it says option O is Notion. So maybe I can actually just do that directly. Let's try that. Command O, or uh, option O, boom. We get our uh, new task in Notion. That's really cool. So it gives me an option to change the title here, and then I can say attach the email as an email or a backlink. And I think the difference here is like the email actually will inject the email content as best as possible into the Notion page. And a backlink will just create a link back to the email so that you can click through to it. Both of these actually add a backlink. The email will actually add a backlink uh, back to the email. And of course, the only database I have connected is OK Actions. I do have some other ones, and these are probably because these are nested databases inside OK Actions here. And I'm just going to click Save to Notion. Let's see what happens. So it says email was saved to Notion. It doesn't give us a link to that page. That would be a really helpful thing. So I just kind of have to assume that um, you know that it was created uh, successfully. So let's go back to my Notion here. Cool. So because I've got that created at today and status is not complete, I've got my email here. Let's open it up and have a look. There's the Joe email. All the content is there. Uh, and what what are we noticing here? It looks like none of those links came through. So all of this beautifully formatted HTML content, non-existent in Notion. Uh, so that's kind of problematic. So that's not really going to help me take action here because I don't, I'm not actually able to click on those links here. So, uh, but it is a way that we can get at least some data into our space and maybe then I assign it, you know, uh, an actual owner to process it because you can see here, because I've got 
um, I've got this property set up to have the default be created by. And if I take off no uh, that default, then Spark is removed. Um, one of the limitations on the Notion side of things is that when we get to a person property, so if I wanted to say, show me all of the people, you know, all of the emails from Spark, I can't do that right now because you can't search for an owner by integration. Um, so what I'm trying to think of now is how else you might be able to um, to handle this right now. Like perhaps when you capture that email, let's say I wanted to capture this uh, SoundCloud comment here. Very smooth, need this, cool. I will capture that. So we were doing what, option O? Maybe I do something like this where I just kind of prefix it with Spark, save it to Notion. And we'll see what happens here. Let's go back to our Notion. Let's see what this one looks like. So it's just grabbing the text. You know, this is just grabbing the text. It's not formatting it anyway. It's not adding links. So it's really just like kind of referential. And you can see here, it does have this link open in Spark. So that allows us to click back. It'll go to the Spark website and transition me back into the Spark app, uh, opening that email up because Spark's kind of like deeply, deeply integrated with all these services. Um, but at least this way, you know, theoretically, if I had done the same thing with Joe's email here, like I prefixed it with Spark, um, I could make this, um, you know, I could do something like this, like get rid of this filter and maybe I add a, where the task, and I could say starts with Spark. And so that would be a way to get all the Spark emails that hadn't been processed yet. And then I could go and say like, okay, uh, we'll assign, you know, Ben an owner to, as owner to check out this comment. Uh, this is related to, maybe it's related to my music journey project, which is ongoing, and maybe I'll do that today. Um, and then it's actually gonna, you know, and then I could maybe remove this prefix here or something like that. Or maybe I add an automation to remove the Spark prefix with a formula or something like that after it's been uh, assigned an owner and a project and a date or something like that. So that could trigger, the automation could trigger on anything that has that Spark prefix and also has, uh, has no owner or no project or no like date, uh, something like that. So this is very, very, very bare bones at the moment, but we can get data into Notion from Spark directly. And, you know, I would encourage you if you're gonna use this to develop some kind of, of system with prefixing or naming or filters so that we can process our inbox and make sure, you know, so once I'm done with this one, um, you, you could remove that and then my inbox is kind of processed and now these things have become tasks or maybe the reference materials in another database or something like that. So really exciting stuff, not, um, not super amazing yet, but there is the potential for the ability to maybe in the future we'll be able to assign people here and maybe we'll be able to pick a project here, stuff like that, that you could give more access to Spark and Spark could be able to, you know, uh, make some of those alignment decisions for you and then have a, you know, have a reference back to the email to be able to send an email back to that person once you start processing that task or reference material. So that's an early look at Spark. Nothing super exciting yet, but uh, it is a good starting point. Hope that helps.